Now to an amazing deep sea discovery. The crew of a high tech research vessel just found the wreckage of the USS Hornet. A legendary warship, a 17,000 foot abyss, and a lone deep sea drone. This isn't science fiction. It's the true story of the discovery of the USS Hornet CV-8. After vanishing in 1942, the carrier became one of the greatest mysteries of the Pacific War. Now, when they come down, you hear them going through the decks, plink, 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 and then when they explode, whoosh. When an unmanned submersible finally entered its watery grave, it began transmitting images that no one was prepared for. The footage didn't show a wreck. It showed a museum at the bottom of the world, and the artifacts it recorded left seasoned explorers utterly breathless, wondering if they were seeing a ghost. A time capsule unsealed. As the drone crept forward, the surreal nature of the discovery only intensified. The 1.1-inch anti-aircraft guns were still locked in their mounts, their casings and supports exactly where they were during the ship's final desperate battle. It was as if the crew had simply vanished mid-action. Then something truly bizarre came into view. Sitting perfectly upright as if waiting to haul another bomber into position was an International Harvester aircraft tug. The small tractor, a workhorse of the flight deck, was so well preserved its shape was unmistakable. After nearly eight decades submerged in corrosive salt water, it shouldn't have been there. It defied all logic. What many overlooked in the initial excitement was how this preservation was even possible. At a depth where water pressure exceeds 7,500 pounds per square inch, the ocean was expected to have crushed everything. But the real shock was yet to come. Further along the deck, the drone's camera settled on a Grumman F-4F Wildcat fighter plane. Its wings were still neatly folded back, just as a deckhand would have left them to save space. It wasn't shattered or swept away by the descent. It was parked. The sight was so unbelievable, it felt like looking at a photograph from 1942, not live footage from the bottom of the Pacific. What the drone captured next sent a chill through the entire crew. Inside the ship's island structure, a jacket was still hanging from a hook. In another compartment, a wash kit lay open a toothbrush still visible. These weren't just artifacts. They were the last traces of the men who called this steel behemoth home. And on the hull, faint but clear, the number eight confirmed her identity. This was the legend herself. The Hornet wasn't just found, she was revealed. The drone had entered a time capsule, a steel tomb that refused to be forgotten. Experts were left speechless because the laws of science and decay seemed to have been suspended in this pocket of the deep sea. The ship's catastrophic damage from the battle was obvious. Gaping holes from bombs and torpedoes scarred her sides. And yet so much of her remained eerily intact. Researchers realized they weren't just looking at a wreck, they were looking at the final moments of 140 men, preserved with a clarity that was both magnificent and heartbreaking. The deep sea had taken the Hornet, but in a strange way, it had also protected her. But this ship was more than a relic. It was a legend. To understand what makes these images so powerful, you have to know the story of the ship that refused to die. 16 Months of Fury The story of the USS Hornet CV-8 began not with a bang, but with a quiet urgency. Launched in late 1940, she was one of the Navy's newest Yorktown-class aircraft carriers, a sleek 824-foot giant designed to project American power across the seas. You see, in the tense months before the nation was plunged into World War II, ships like the Hornet were a symbol of a sleeping giant beginning to stir. By the time she was commissioned in October 1941, just weeks before the attack on Pearl Harbor, no one could have predicted the legendary and tragically short life that awaited her. Her career would last only 16 months, but in that time she would etch her name into history. Her first trial was something straight out of a Hollywood movie, a mission so audacious it was considered almost impossible. In April 1942, the Hornet was tasked with the unthinkable, launching 16 land-based Army B-25 bombers from her short flight deck to strike Tokyo. Many people are crazy about the Doolittle raid, but the thing nobody tells you is the sheer impossibility of the task. These bombers were too heavy, the runway was too short, and there was no way for them to land back on the carrier. It was a one-way trip, yet on the morning of April 18th, the bombers roared to life and lifted off the Hornet's deck, bringing the war to Japan's home islands for the first time. The raid did limited physical damage, but its psychological impact was immense. 
It was a massive morale boost for America and proved that Japan was not untouchable. The Hornet had delivered the first major counterpunch. Just two months later, she sailed into the pages of history again at the Battle of Midway. Alongside her sister ships, the Enterprise and Yorktown, the Hornet's air groups helped turn the tide of the entire Pacific War. Her pilots swarmed Japanese carriers, contributing to the sinking of four of them, effectively breaking the back of the Japanese Navy. Midway was a stunning victory, and the Hornet was right in the thick of it. But victory in the Pacific always came at a steep price. The war pressed on, and the Hornet was sent to the brutal fighting in the Solomon Islands. For weeks, she was the only operational American carrier in the region, her pilots flying relentless missions to support the Marines on Guadalcanal. Life aboard was a constant cycle of tension and exhaustion. The ship and her crew were being pushed to their absolute limit. Her luck finally ran out in October 1942 at the Battle of the Santa Cruz Islands. In a furious onslaught, Japanese dive bombers and torpedo planes swarmed the Hornet. She was hit again and again. Three bombs, two torpedoes, and 16 other impacts left her dead in the water, engulfed in flames. Her crew fought heroically to save her, but the damage was too great. The order was given to abandon the ship. In a final act of defiance, the Hornet refused to go down easily. American destroyers fired nine torpedoes and over 400 rounds of five-inch shells into her burning hulk, but she remained afloat. It was only when Japanese destroyers arrived the next day and fired their own torpedoes that the legend finally slipped beneath the waves, taking one, 140 of her crew with her. For 77 years, her story ended there, lost in the crushing deep. Finding this ghost would require a different kind of battle, one fought with technology, patience, and a billionaire's dream. Petrol's impossible mission. For decades, the final resting place of the USS Hornet was one of the ocean's most enduring mysteries. She was out there somewhere in the vast, unforgiving expanse of the South Pacific, but the ocean is notoriously good at keeping secrets. What many overlooked is that finding a specific wreck thousands of feet down is harder than finding a needle in a haystack. It's like finding a specific grain of sand on all the world's beaches combined. Many believe she was lost for good, but that all changed thanks to the relentless efforts of the late billionaire Paul Allen and the crew of his research vessel, the RV Petrel. This wasn't a treasure hunt, it was a mission of historical preservation. The Petrel was a 250-foot technological marvel equipped with tools that could peel back the ocean's secrets layer by layer. The search didn't start at sea, it began in dusty archives with a team of researchers poring over declassified naval records. You see, they had to become detectives, piecing together a puzzle from 77 years ago. They analyzed the logbooks and after-action reports from the nine U.S. warships that witnessed the Hornet's final hours. Each report contained a slightly different set of coordinates, a slightly different account of the ship's drift. The team painstakingly cross-referenced every single data point, creating what they called a probable search box, spanning hundreds of square miles of unforgiving seabed. This was where they believed the Hornet's ghost lay in wait. It was a monumental task, where a single miscalculation could send them searching in the wrong patch of ocean for weeks. With their search area defined, the Petrol's advanced technology took over. They deployed an autonomous underwater vehicle, or AUV. This sophisticated underwater drone was programmed to swim in a precise lawnmower pattern, methodically scanning the seafloor with its powerful sonar systems. For days, the AUV glided through the darkness, sending back detailed maps of the abyssal plain below. The crew watched the data stream in looking for any anomaly, any shape that wasn't just another rock or volcanic ridge. The pressure on the team was immense. They were working around the clock, fueled by caffeine and the hope of a breakthrough. Then, on its very first dive mission within the search box, the AUV picked up something. A faint, unmistakable shape appeared on the sonar readout. It was large, man-made, and it was sitting upright. The excitement was electric, but they needed visual confirmation. This was the moment for the remotely operated vehicle, or ROV. Tethered to the petrol by a miles-long fiber optic cable, the ROV was their eyes in the deep. It was armed with powerful lights and high-definition cameras built to withstand the immense pressure of the abyss. The crew carefully guided the ROV down, 
a descent that took hours. As it neared the bottom, the murky darkness gave way to the ghostly outline of a massive structure. The ROV's lights revealed the unmistakable features of a Yorktown-class aircraft carrier. They had found her. The impossible hunt was over, but seeing the wreck was one thing, understanding its human cost was another. The discovery would soon connect the past to the present in a deeply personal and emotional way. A Voice from the Past The discovery of the USS Hornet was more than just a technological triumph. It was a profoundly human event. Steel and rivets can tell you how a ship was built, but only people can tell you how it lived and breathed. Deep in the abyss, the Hornet was a silent tomb, but on the surface there was one man left who could give her a voice. Richard Nowatzki. At 95 years old, he was one of the last living survivors of the Hornet sinking. For him, the ship wasn't a historical artifact. It was a memory, a piece of his own life he thought was lost forever. When the news of the discovery reached him, a lifetime of memories came rushing back. He was just an 18-year-old gunner's mate when he stood on her decks during that final horrific battle. When the research team showed him the first video footage from the wreck, something incredible happened. The camera panned across a battered 5-inch gun mount, its barrel still pointing defiantly upwards. Richard's eyes lit up with recognition. That's where I was, he said, his voice thick with emotion. He had manned that very gun position as bombs and torpedoes tore his ship apart. Seeing it again, perfectly preserved in the silent deep, was like staring through a portal in time. The thing nobody tells you about history is that it's not just dates and facts. It's visceral, personal, and for Richard Novotsky, it was right there on the screen in front of him. It was a reunion 77 years in the making. His memories painted a vivid picture of the chaos. They used armor-piercing bombs, he recalled. When they come down, you hear them going through the decks. Plink, 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 and then when they explode, the whole ship shakes. His words bridged the gap between the silent wreck and the terrifying reality of its last moments. In the face of such a somber memory, his spirit remained unbroken. With a twinkle in his eye, he joked to the explorers, If you go down to my locker, there's 40 bucks in there. You can have it. That small moment of humor was a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, a light that even the darkest depths of the ocean couldn't extinguish. But for every survivor like Richard, there were 140 men who never made it off the Hornet. For their families, the discovery brought something that had been missing for generations, closure. The ship was no longer just lost at sea. She had a known resting place, a final dignified grave. Under international law, specifically the Sunken Military Craft Act, the site is protected. It is a hallowed ground, a war grave that will not be disturbed. The mission was never about salvage. It was about remembrance. It was about honoring the courage and sacrifice of the young men who served on her decks. The discovery of the Hornet serves as a powerful reminder that history is not abstract. It is the collective story of individuals, of bravery, of loss, and ultimately, of remembrance. The Hornet's discovery proves that no secret is safe from our reach. But just because we can explore these deep-sea graves, does it mean we always should? Let us know your thoughts below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more incredible stories from the deep.